Hey everybody, Luke Gordon here, and in today's video, we are going to talk about horizontal canal vertigo or horizontal canal BPPV. And I've got the whiteboard with me today because horizontal canal BPV, BPPV, excuse me, is much more confusing and difficult to diagnose than the typical, more common posterior canal BPPV. So I'm going to explain the difference just briefly at the start of this video, and then I'm going to explain in this video how to diagnose horizontal canal BPPV, which is the first step in eliminating it. So you've got to know, again, diagnostically, which canal is it in. And with horizontal canal, like I said, it's a little more confusing. So you also want to know what part of the canal it's in. So I'm going to explain in this video, and then I'm going to make some future videos about how to treat it. And I'll do my best. Again, I got the whiteboard with me so I can write some stuff down. Um, I think this video is going to be helpful too. If you're trying to self-diagnose and treat, um, treating yourself or like a loved one, or even if you're a, a physical therapist or someone like that who's interested in treating clients with this, this video should help. Um, I would uh, grab a, you know, push pause right now and grab um, something to write with. So like a pen and a notepad or something, because I'm going to give you a nice little algorithm um, or what would you call it, um, abbreviation for when, acronym, that's the word I'm looking for, an acronym to help you remember how to treat it and how to figure out what's going on. So again, this video will focus on the diagnosis and then I'll make another video to focus on how to treat it. So um, what's different between horizontal canal vertigo and um, and posterior canal? So first of all, like I said, posterior canal is much more common. That's what we're using like the Dix Hall Pike test to test for. Um, when you do the positional testing, what you're gonna see is you're gonna see a torsional nystagmus of the eyes. So so the eyes will move kind of like beat up and, and they'll twist at the same time. So that's your classic posterior canal vertigo. Like I said, it's much more common than the horizontal canal um, variant. Um, so if you're familiar with that a little bit, you know, you can go check out my video on the Dix Hall Pike test if you want to. Um, and, and look at the treatment. The typical treatment for that is the Epley. So those are the two big keywords, and that's the torsional nystagmus. Now the horizontal canal uh, vertigo, it's really easy to spot actually, because if you're doing the positional test, which for horizontal canal is the supine roll test, um, I can link that to this video as well, either right, I'll probably put it right here and then possibly at the end of the video. Um, the supine roll test, um, what you'll see then is the, the direction of the nystagmus or the eye movements is to the side. The eyes will just beat to the side. There's no twisting, there's no up and down, it is straight to the side. So it's really easy to spot initially in terms of the fact that you or the person you're looking at, if it's your client or your loved one, that they have horizontal canal vertigo. It's just really tricky to figure out uh, what side it's on. It's not that tricky, but it's trickier than, than posterior canal. Um, and then after that, it's, it's tricky to figure that out and then figure out how to treat it. So again, let's talk about how to figure that out. Um, another kind of uh, interesting little side note is that oftentimes, well, not oftentimes, <laughs> I shouldn't say that and freak you out, but sometimes when I'm treating a client for a posterior canal, vertigo and they have the torsional nystagmus with their eyes torsional upbeat and we do the epley maneuver um, sometimes i get unlucky or the client gets unlucky because it doesn't affect me too much but the client gets unlucky and their their torsional nystagmus will convert to horizontal canal nystagmus so watch out for that that's an important point to, to look out for either for yourself or again if you're helping clients because sometimes I get really excited when I find someone who has posterior canal. I know exactly how to treat it with the Epley. You roll them through the Epley, sit them up, let them rest, test them again with a Dix Hall Pike, and you test them again, and their eyes are beating in a different direction, and that's when I get a little freaked out. I always go check my notes to make sure I treat it correctly. Um, so anyhow, that can happen as well. So again, uh, let's, just, let's just say you've established that you have a horizontal canal issue because your eyes are beating to the side. What you need to know first then is which side is affected. So you do the supine roll test, which I'm just gonna describe briefly here. So supine roll test, you, you or your client, you lay straight back onto your back and your head is uh, tipped forward about 30 degrees. So you usually use a couple pillows. At the clinic, we've got tables that kind of tilt up, like the headrest tilts up. So um, you're tilted up 30 degrees and then you just rotate the head 60 degrees to one side. Now, a positive test would be then if, if that induces the person's um, vertigo. And again, it's gonna be that horizontal, you're gonna see the horizontal eye movements. So that's the supine roll test in a nutshell. It's a pretty easy test to do. What you need to figure out first, this is the first step, is you need to figure out is that, uh, are the eyes beating towards the ground or away from the ground? So that's step one. If it's towards the ground, we call that 
geotropic, geo referring to the ground. If it's away from the ground or kind of like towards the ceiling because you're turned to a side, we call that ageotropic or apogeotropic. Um, I see a reference um, in like the materials that I've done for my training both ways. So ageotropic versus geotropic. So that's step one. I'm going to jot this down too as we go. Um, so geotropic. If it's geotropic, um, that tends to be a little easier to treat, uh, which is great. Um, basically what that tells you, just if you're curious, when it's beating towards the ground, geotropic means that the little particles in your inner ear are free floating in the canal. This is way different than posterior canal, again, because it gets more confusing with horizontal. So if you have a, a down beating, so it's beating towards the ground, it's geotropic, that tells you that the little crystals are in the canal. So that's your diagnosis there so far. Um, if it's beating away from the ground or up towards the ceiling, then that tells you they're not free floating in the canal. They're actually stuck to the cupula, which is a little jelly thing in, inside your inner ear. That's really important to distinguish the two because you're going to treat differently depending on that. So that's why we're talking about diagnosis. That's why this video is going to get a little long because it's confusing, but if you take some notes, I think it's going to help you. So step one, figure out if it's geotropic or ageotropic, apogeotropic, whatever you want to call it. Um, if it's a geotropic, so follow with me now. You got it written down, geotropic. Maybe I'll even write it for you. Hold on here. Geo... Tropic. So there's geotropic, if you can see it on the camera there. Um, it's in the canal. What you have to figure out then is which side is, um, which side is, are we talking about? Which side of the canal? So if I'm turning my head to the left and that produces a, a downward um, nystagmus and it's, it's really intense when I turn my head to the left, that's the side that we're dealing with. Um, the, the weird thing about horizontal canal uh, BBBV2 that makes it so much more confusing than posterior canal is that um, when, I, when I'm testing a posterior canal, it's only going to be positive on one side or the other. It will only be positive when I test the right or when I test the left. With horizontal, it'll typically be positive on both sides because the horizontal canal is lined up. Both horizontal canals are lined up during the supine roll test. Um, I won't go into too much detail on that because I'm probably getting confusing as we speak. But what I will tell you is um, with a geotropic nystagmus, it'll probably be positive on the supine roll test to both sides. So what you want to pick is pick the more intense side. So um, you're talking to the client, you're looking at yourself, however you're doing this. If you turn your head to the left for the supine roll test and it's beating down towards the ground and the left side is more intense, it's on the left side. So that's the diagnosis. The more intense side is the side. So more intense and we're talking about the canal. We call that canalothiasis. That's geotropic. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. Write that down. The next thing we're going to talk about then is the ageotropic or apogeotropic. Let's just call it ageotropic for ease. Okay, ageotropic again, you do the supine roll test where you're laying flat on your back, your head is tucked 30 degrees forward, you turn your head to the left, and now the nystagmus is beating away from the ground. It's beating up away from the ground. Okay, just like geotropic, you test both sides with the supine roll test and it's beating away from the ground on both sides. So it's kind of confusing again, right? So which side are we talking about? We know right off the bat that with ageotropic that we're talking about the cupula. So we know that right off the bat, but we need to know which side. So we're figuring out, so you lay me on the left and it's really intense on my left side beating towards uh, the ceiling, which is actually like beating towards my right ear if you think about it. You turn me to the right and it's not as intense. It's still beating up away from the ceiling. Um, so, so which side is it? When, I, when you lay me on my left side and it's beating up away more intense, it's on my right side. So it's the opposite of geotropic. And this is where it gets confusing even for me sometimes. So whatever side again is more intense, you test me to the left and it's super intense beating up 
towards the ceiling. You test me to the right and it's less intense. When I'm on my left and it's more intense on my left, it means it's the right side. So it's the opposite side. So less intense, let's say side up here, or sorry, for geotropic is more intense. For ageotropic, it's less intense. So the less intense side tells you where you're positive, and it's the cupula. Hopefully I spelled that correctly. Pretty sure I did. That's tricky. Comment below if you have a question. <laughs> I'll try to clear it up as much as I can. But this is where you start with treating horizontal canal, uh, BPPV, vertigo. You've got to know, um, is it geotropic? Is it ageotropic? Which tells you again, is it in the canal or is it stuck by the cupula? And then you've got to know which side are we talking about. With geotropic, it's the more intense side. So if you lay me on the left and that's my intense side and it's beating down towards the ground, it's in my canal on the left. If you, with ageotropic, it's the less intense side. So if you, um, if you lay me on my left and that's the, you know, that's my intense side, it's actually in my right ear. So if you lay me on my right, and that's the less intense side, and it's beating away towards the ceiling. That's what, that's what I mean by that. So again, try to keep that clear in your mind. If you have a question, just comment below because it gets confusing. Um, that's going to lead to your treatment then down the road. So that's the next video. We'll talk about how to treat these two. Um, the treatment that I prefer for both variations is the Gafani. Um, it, you just have to figure out which direction you're going to go with the Gafani. Um, and then it usually works pretty well. So that's your diagnosis video. I know it got long. I can't see. It's like 11, 12 minutes. So hopefully that helped. I wanted to make a longer video just because, again, it's confusing. Um, I know that. I still get confused even though I treat clients for this on a somewhat regular basis. So um, yeah, I hope that helps. And then look for my next video where we'll talk about a treat with the Gafani and picking, based on what you now know with the diagnosis criteria, picking which direction to do the Gafani. And hopefully that'll help you with um, the horizontal canal vertigo. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.